Hello everyone and welcome back to my Linux tutorial. For this tutorial, we're going to look at shell scripting. And shell scripting is a text file that contains a list of commands that runs or operates on a Linux or Unix based system. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use the terminal that comes inside of my Mac. If you are on Windows, you can download a program like PuTTY to run Linux command. So to create a script inside of your Linux system, I'm going to use the touch command and the name of the script. So for this tutorial, I'm going to name my script hello.sh. And the dot sh is very important when you are creating a script. sh is a type of shell. There are many other shells you can use. For example, you can use bash shell. You can also use csh shell and csh shell is for C shells. You can also use zsh shell and also ksh shell and the ksh shell is for corn shell. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use dot sh and i'm going to hit enter and i will do an ls on the folder just to see the file i just created so here is my hello dot sh file so this file i'm going to use to write all my commands so to write commands inside of a file you need a text editor there are several different editors you can use as well you can use atom you can use nano you can use vi or vim so for this tutorial, I'm going to use the VI text editor to write my command. And to open up the VI text editor in terminal, you use VI and the name of your text file. So my text file name is hello.sh. And now I get the VI text editor to write my command. Now, when you inside of the VI text editor, you have to press lowercase I to write your command. Now, if I just start writing on the keyboard, you would hear a bunch of noise, which indicates that I need to hit the letter I to insert commands inside of the file. So I'm going to test it. Escape here, WQ. And now I'm going to run the VI code again. So VI, hello dot sh and i'm going to hit enter then if i press e there is nothing if i press i and then you see the insert keyword at the bottom so once you see the insert keyword at the bottom then you know you are ready to write or input text inside of your text editor when you are inside of your text editor the first line that should be inside of any text editor is a line called the shebang and the shebang tells the system which command processor should run the script so in order to write the shebang you have to use hash exclamation mark slash user or usr slash bin slash env space bash if you are using python instead of bash then you want to write python or if you are using JavaScript, then you're going to write JavaScript. So for this tutorial, we are using bash. So I'm going to write bash. Um, another a note I want to give on the shebang as well. If you are using bash, by default, the command processor will be bash. So you don't really have to specify the shebang, but for conventional reasons, I always would love to put my shebang in, whether it's Python or JavaScript or bash. So inside of the text editor, I'm going to write a simple echo command to print hello viewers. And to save the file inside of the VI text editor, you have to hit the escape key and then the colon and WQ and WQ will save and quit and bring you back to the terminal. So when I press enter, then I should get my terminal. So now we're back in the terminal. If you want to run your script, you use the command dot slash and the name of your script. So the name of our script is hello dot sh and I will hit enter. 
and when I hit enter, I get the permission deny error. So the permission deny error is simply saying we cannot execute the script because we don't have execution power. And to prove that to you, I will use the ls dash al command. So if we look at the last one where we created the script, we can see that only the owner have read and write power. So I created the script so I can read and write in the script, but I do not have execution power. Same as group and same as others. No one have read, write, or execution power. So to change that, we have to use the chmod command. So we're going to say chmod, and I want to use the number 755. And 755 will give me, which is the owner, read, write, and execute power, but it would give everyone else read and execute power. So then we write chmod 555 and the name of the text file. And the name of the text file is hello.sh. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now if I do a next ls dash al. So now we can see that everyone have execution power for the hello.sh file. So let's go back again and execute the file. So we use dot slash hello dot sh and we're going to hit enter. And now our file is executed properly with the echo command hello viewers. Another way you can execute your file or another way you can run your file, you can say bash and the name of the text file. So hello dot sh and we get the same outcome so if you want to know exactly where your bash command is located you can use the command which bash and it will tell you that your bash is in user slash bin slash bash so it's same as the shebang if you want to know where is your bash file for the shebang, you can use which bash command to get the full path of the bash inside of your system. So now we are going to go on to variables and in shell scripting, there are two types of variables. There are system variables and there are user defined variables and the system variables is the PWD home path host user and shell variables. There are other lists of variables as well on the system that you cannot use. The variable are designated for the system. So you cannot create a variable inside of your program called PWD or home or um, host or user. Let's clear the screen. So I'll clear the screen using the clear command. And to see a list of variables on your system, you can use the env command. And the EMV command shows you all the variables that is for the system. We have Oracle home, we have SSH connection, we have the home variable, we have the shell level, PWD, the lang. So all of those variables here cannot be used inside of your program. You cannot name any variable in your program, node module or lang or bin or path. Those are designed for the system. They are reserved for the system. Let me go ahead and clear the screen again. And I'm going to create another file and I'm going to call this file intro.sh and hit enter. Then I'm going to just do my chmod one time. So 755 intro.sh which will give me execution power. So now if I do an LS inside of my folder, I would see I have two scripts file or executable files. One is hello.sh that we did previously and intro.sh. So I'm going to use the VI uh, text editor to write some command into the intro.sh file. And now we inside of the intro.sh, so I'm going to put my shebang slash 
usr slash bin slash env space bash. So in order for you to use or declare a variable, you'd have to write the variable name. Then you use the equal sign with no space. If you use a space, that will create an error. So you don't use any space, the equal sign, and then you assign a value to your variable. So the value I'm going to assign to the variable will be Nikki. And then I'm going to also create another variable called last name. And then I'm going to assign the value Pope to the last name variable. Now, if you look at the way how variables are created in Linux, there is no data type specified. So for other programming language, they would probably specify a string or a character string. Um, inside of Linux, there is no string, int, uh, floats, decimals, or any of that. The compiler would automatically pick up the data type for the value. Once I declared my variable name, then I'm going to create a simple echo statement. And for the echo statement, I'm going to say hi. And to use the variable inside of your program, you have to use a dollar sign and the name of the variable. So the name of my variable is first name. And I also want to use the last name variable. So I have to use a dollar sign and last name. And I'm going to say, how are you today? And then I'm going to use hit the escape colon WQ to quit. And then I'm going to run the script using dot slash and the name of the file. So it's going to be intro dot sh. And I'm going to hit enter. And the text that I've put input inside of the file came back. Hi, Nikki Pope. How are you today? You can also use spaces when you are assigning a value to your variable, but you have to enclose your spaces inside of single quotes or double quotes. So let's go back inside of the VI text editor, VI intro dot sh. And if you want to have spaces, now we can delete this line and to delete a line inside of your text editor, uh, you can press double D. So DD, and that will delete the whole line inside of your text editor. So we have deleted the last name variable and I'm going to use the double quotes and I'm going to say P O P E and I'm going to end it with the double quotes. So now because we have deleted the last name variable, we also need to delete it inside of the echo statement as well. So I'm going to hit escape then colon WQ and it will get me back to the terminal. So now I'm going to rerun the script and here I have, hi Nikki Pope, how are you today? You can also pass variables to parameter. Let's go back inside of the file using the VI command. So let's delete this line of code using DD and we're going to hit I to insert. So we can pass values to parameter thing, or we can use dollar sign one. And there are several numeric parameters you can use inside of Linux, starting with dollar sign zero, dollar sign zero cannot be used. Dollar sign zero is the name of your script. However, you can use dollar sign one, two, three, all the way up to 255. However, when you reach double digits like 10, 11, 12 and up, you have to enclose the double digits inside of curly braces. Inside of the echo statement, I'm going to use dollar sign one. I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save. And then I'm going to run the script again. I'm going to say Nikki and hit enter. And now you see it came back. Hi Nikki. How are you today? Um, so let's go back into the VI text editor. And I do not recommend using variables that way because it's going to be a little bit hard for you or hard for whoever is reading the command or reading your program to understand 
what dollar sign one is or what value is expected to pass through this parameter. So what I like doing, I would create a variable. So let's go back and create a variable called name. And we're going to initialize it to dollar sign one. And inside of the echo statement, we're going to use the name variable. So let's hit escape colon WQ enter. This time we're going to execute the script and we're going to say Sally and hit enter and we get hi Sally. How are you today? If you want to use the built-in variables inside of your program, you can do that as well. So let's go back to the text editor. Let's delete this line of code using double G double G and then we're going to press I to insert text and to use the built-in variable inside of the echo command we can do that so let's say here is your current working directory and then to use the built-in variables you have to use dollar sign then open curly brackets and closing curly brackets and inside of the open and closing curly brackets then you specify which command you want to use or which variables you want to use so let's use the pwd command and the pwd command will tell us the present or my present working directory so let's hit escape colon wq to save return to the terminal so let us run the script again using dot slash intro dot sh hit enter and you would see my current working directory is slash home slash and pop one slash tutorial now if i come here and i run the pwd command and i get the same path that has specified with my program. So you can use the shift command to shift the position of your parameter. So let's say, for example, let us set some values. Let's say set uh, A, B, and C, and we press enter. So we have A, B, and C set. So let's do echo uh, dollar sign one, and echo dollar sign one will print A. A is going to be dollar sign one. B is going to be dollar sign two and C is going to be dollar sign three. So let's do echo dollar sign two and we will get B and let's also do the last one as well. The shift command shifted the positional parameter. So it shift B to where A was.